Hello, I'm Brad Stubbe, Sheriff of Manatee County, and welcome to Sheriff's Patrol. And I'm Dave Bristow. Coming up on Sheriff's Patrol, a new website to help solve crimes and local teenagers learn some valuable driving tips. But first on Sheriff's Patrol, our Violent Crimes Task Force has been busy lately investigating several high-profile crimes. Randy Warren recently had a chance to ride with the unit. Dave, on most evenings and on into the late hours here in Manatee County, this special team of detectives are working in some of the higher crime areas. All we do are pay attention to the violent crimes. I didn't see nothing, man. VCTF, Violent Crimes Task Force, targeting areas where most of the violence occurs. Such as home invasions, carjackings. Yeah, they're taking me to jail. Aggravated batteries. Crimes that often happen after the sun goes down. 3 a.m. 21, 1075, 21 past. VCTF detectives are usually just minutes away from any call. We are the first line responders and start the process of investigating. Nothing from that Groover's Carl earlier? No. As of late, our main objective has been some of these shootings that have been occurring. We will do research as far as locations, addresses, vehicles assigned to these people. We'll, we'll set up surveillance on them. We're 10 12 without party. We'll be 97 there in a minute. VCTF is investigating a violent incident at the Siesta Inn. Here's subject, white male showed up there and smashed a window to one of the rooms and according to the complainant, had a firearm, it says a nine millimeter. The only way I could keep him out is I picked the television up because he was breaking the window in and he showed me a gun and I, threw, and I held the television up. So I finally just threw it. You know what I mean? Right. Because he already had the window broke and then he ran. He left right there, here's a clip to the gun right there. All this property is his? Yep. Hey, bud, don't touch don't anything. Touch hey, don't touch you anything. Know. No, this is mine. Right? Put it down. Really? Hey, no, hey, sure. Uh... Put it down. This guy knows the guy. In fact, he walked up there and started picking up one of the cards yeah, out of the glass. That. Yeah, my, my bank card's there. Turns out this man sure? is a friend of the no. suspect. No, you staying here with him? No, I stay here by myself. But he's no, not telling name. detectives the whole story. Uh, You're well, telling me that you didn't see him tonight. You know you did. Well, I did see him, yes. I know you did too. Right. What's his name? Um, I know him by, by Toby. Then, detectives get a break. The suspect, Tobin Johnson, leaves his ID in the pile of broken glass. Call him right now if you want to talk to him or something. Oh, do we want to talk to him? Okay. What, what do you think? Well, you think yeah. we want? Yeah. Sure, of course okay. we do. I'll call him up then. We can actually have the cases assigned to us, and it, it alleviates some of the caseload from the person's detectives. If it rises to an extreme level, we'll have the on-call CID detective paged out and they'll come out and take over the investigation. We'll work in conjunction with them and forward on any information that we've obtained up to that point. Who's going to get my bank card? Listen, back? tell Toby he needs to come here or meet us somewhere. Is he going to come meet us? I don't know. Here he wants to talk to you. Please. If he's going to come meet us, I'll talk to him. Toby never did come back to talk to detectives, but one of the victims positively identifies him from a photo pack. Okay. All right. Thank you. The case is likely a dispute over drugs. As, as long as I've been doing this, it still amazes me some of the things that we'll see. As for Toby, VCF detectives have issued a warrant on a list of charges. It's just a matter of time, and they'll make an arrest. Sheriff. Well, as most of you know, uh, we have two violent crimes task force units and uh, we cover seven days a week. And uh, these folks are the quick, ready response to uh, any of the violent crimes that take place in, in our community. Yeah, certainly they work with CID, they work with road and uh, it's a great asset to have them out there. Sheriff, it was November of 2008 when Sabine Musil Bueller disappeared from Anna Maria Island. Even though her body was never discovered, detectives are working the case as a homicide with continued hopes of making an arrest.
MSO has searched several areas of Anna Maria in the last three years, trying to bring closure in this case. We did an area search with cadaver dogs, looking for signs of human decomposition that may have been buried underneath the sand. Um, that didn't reveal anything. There was one area of interest that all three dogs had found. We went back the next day and dug that area up and there was nothing found except for some turtle remains. Um, the next step was to come out here with tractors and start to dig. What we do is we pick the sand up, we dig down to the water table, uh, we move it off to the side, and after we dig that and it's thoroughly searched and we're confident with it, we put all the dirt back. All the, all the beach sand goes back on, we smooth it out and leave it just as we found it. Based on the evidence that we do have in this case already and what's been found out here previously, you know, you just got to come up with some hypothesis and, you know, an area where we, you know, common sense might tell you that she may have been put um, by the suspect. And at that point, you know, we just go through the different processes here of clearing it, clearing the sea out, sea out so that we can try to see if we can find something. Sheriff, the suspect in this case remains in prison on a violation of probation charges and we continue to build our case. We do, uh, and, and we have not stopped uh, running leads. And of course, most recently, we just did a, a dig uh, in an area on uh, Anna Maria uh, looking for some remains uh, because we did find something of uh, very, very good interest in this case. All right, don't go away. We'll be back with more Sheriff's Patrol right after this. At this point, the burglar walks around to the back of the house and he cuts the screen and enters the patio. So, you want to be a part of a criminal street gang? You just might want to think about it. Joining a street gang is wrong. It could be dead wrong. I don't know. My mom said I should be home at midnight. Don't worry. I'll make sure I get you home. Happy anniversary. Oh my God, I'm just gonna take her home, right? Take her home. Welcome back everyone to Sheriff's Patrol. In news from the Sheriff's Office, our Deputy of the Months are Daniel Ensign and Jason Vitteret. Deputy Ensign successfully intervened in a suicide attempt, while Deputy Vitteret apprehended a murder suspect shortly after the suspect shot and killed her husband. Our Employees of the Month are Jason Smith and Don Brown. Turning to promotions, we have several new first class deputies, Carrie Chapman, Thomas Beckerleg, Jeremy Bass, Jerome Tommaso, Joseph Fusa, and Jason Ferrier. In years of service, Deputy John Shallow and Jane Thielen have been at the Sheriff's Office for 20 years. And celebrating 25 years of service are Sergeant Gary Cumby, Deputy Maxie Bragg, Lance Christie. We have three retirements to pass along, Deputy Ralph Salerno, Deputy Dennis Gillespie, and our old friend, Detective Ned Foy. Finally, the MSO gang unit was recently recognized 
as the Florida Gang Investigators Association Gang Unit of the Year. And Elizabeth Thomas was named the Florida Gang Investigators Association Analyst of the Year. Sheriff, some big honors for our gang unit. And you know, this isn't the first time. Uh, several years ago, we uh, had one of our investigators that was honored, and then a year after that, one of our other investigators, and now the entire unit. Uh, and, and that goes to their credit uh, based on the RICO investigations that we've been doing, the racketeer influence and corrupt organization uh, that, that have been really ongoing for the past four years. Well, we got some good news recently. We scored big in the recent Click It or Ticket Challenge. Now, based on statistics, the MSO traffic unit qualified to enter a drawing for a new Harley-Davidson motorcycle and a new Dodge Challenger. Well, amazingly, Sheriff, we won both of them, the motorcycle and the car. We did. Sergeant <laughs> Kenyon called me and uh, he said, you're not going to believe this. We, we just won uh, uh, a motorcycle. And he told me where they were at. and. Uh, about uh, two minutes later, he called me back and he said, you're not going to believe this, we just want a car. So, uh, you know, it's all about uh, compliance with the law when you're talking about uh, seat belt violations. And uh, we want everybody just to wear their seat belts. And uh, our, our traffic unit, as well as the rest of the sheriff's office, has done an out, outstanding job with this enforcement effort. And we now have a new program we started at the sheriff's office to help identify persons of interest in criminal cases. It's called Can You ID Me? And as we hear from crime prevention specialist Don Straup, it's a chance for the community to get involved. This new web page, Can You ID Me, is accessible off the manateesheriff.com website. You go to manateesheriff.com and right on the front it'll say Can You ID Me? You click on that and we'll open that page up. We have four different topics at this time. We have open warrants, persons of interest, um, stolen property, and missing persons. The website's still under construction, but easily person of interest is going to have a lot of activity on there for you to look at. We'll have still shots as well as YouTube. So coming into this one, we're actually going to look at somebody's personal camera system that they have at their home that when their home was uh, had an attempted burglary on it, we have a suspect to look at. It'll bring up the site, it'll explain who the detective is, it'll give you the extension and uh, non-emergency number to call, but it also gives you the 1-866-634-TIPS, the Manatee County Crime Stoppers website, and you are eligible for a reward of up to $1,000. So this is really, really exciting. Bringing it down, it says click here for YouTube video of burglary. So we click onto that screen. Here we go. Comes up into the YouTube. Here's the full screen. Home burglary caught on tape, Bradenton, Florida, August 21st, 2011 at 4.06 a.m. This guy's getting ready. Burglar comes from far side of truck. Moments later, resident leaves and the burglar tries to get into the front door. So here we go. You're watching an empty uh, uh, front door. He's got a camera system. He locks the door. Gets in his truck and goes to work like you and I do every day. Truck backs up. The owner leaves the parking lot within Five seconds, this individual comes up and tries the front door. When he doesn't make it to the front door, he goes around the house. Catching up a little bit. At this point, the burglar walks around to the back of the house and he cuts the screen and enters the patio. In between the, there, he also finds out that the screen patio door or glass, uh, sliding glass door is locked. So. He comes back to the front again and tries a flashlight. He might be checking to see if it's got a deadbolt or not. Once he goes up to the front again, he sees it's got a deadbolt, so he's got to work extra hard. He's going to go about back to the front again, or the back. You can see the little flashlight. He's got a t-shirt on. It's been about a minute and a half. All right, so now the patio camera shows the guy. Guess what? He's taking his shirt off. 
so he doesn't leave any prints. He tries the door. He's able to get it just a little bit, but they've got an anti-slide bar so it can't be slid backwards. He's trying the other side of the sliding glass doors. He heads back to the front door. This burglar is a white male, balding, receding hairline. He's approximately 5'10", 180 to 190 pounds. He has a tattoo. This is the kind of information you can get that might lead you to helping us solve a crime. Isn't this awesome? Going back to the sheriff's website, there's also going to be still photos of individuals that might have used a stolen credit card, might have may maybe witnessed something that came in if they came in later, um, and or it might be people that might have committed a crime and they're just people of interest. We're not quite sure if they were involved or if they were an associate of someone who was. So all of these things can help us bring down the crime in Manatee County because it's everyone's responsibility. Well, well this certainly is another good tool uh, that allows the public to, to assist us because uh, we can't do this alone. And uh, I read the significance from these all the time. And we just had one recently where uh, someone saw their photograph and uh, actually gave us a call and uh, we made an arrest. And this is the kind of thing that people love to get involved in. Yes, you they know? do. And, and we've already got a lot of hits. We have. Sheriff, the Tampa Bay area recently lost one of its true leaders when Leroy Selman passed away. The former Buccaneer was a Hall of Famer on and off the field. Leroy always took time to help the youth of our community, and that includes speaking at one of our boot camp graduations. These young recruits have uh, went through a program, a serious program, and I hope they've adopted a serious attitude as they're exiting out of this program and going back into their families and their communities. We have to be serious as well. And the way we be serious is we have to let them know that we care about them. And to care about them is to embrace them and to love them and to also tell them the truth. You know, to tell them what is for real, not to sugarcoat anything. To encourage them that they can make it. I, I hope that they will hold on to these disciplines and the education, the counseling, all the tools, the life, life skill tools for success. Remember what's brought you to this point. Use those same types of s disciplines and skills, education, to move forward. That was the one thing that I learned from that little humble environment back in Ufala, Oklahoma. Sheriff, you know, we had many, many boot camp graduations and great speakers, but certainly Leroy was one of the best we ever had. He was, and uh, he was a great football player, but more importantly, uh, he was a great man. Uh, he did a lot of things for uh, not only our local community, but the Tampa Bay area community. A and a lot of that was uh, designed to uh, help children. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more of our show right after this. We actually use most of these skills in the police academy setting, and they're doing the same thing. The skills are the same. The courses are the same. It's just a matter of getting the students to the level that they feel comfortable with to drive their car safely. It ain't worth it. Either you're gonna be in jail, prison, or you're gonna get shot up, probably get hit, end up being dead. It ain't worth doing it again, trust me. I know, look at me. Being in jail, going to prison, it ain't worth it. Don't join. Is gang life what you want? Maybe you become my mentor. And maybe I get accepted into college. And maybe you'd help send me to college. And then maybe I get a degree. Then maybe I'll discover a new galaxy. Then maybe I win the Nobel Prize. Who will I thank first? Take stock in children provides deserving kids in your community with scholarships and mentors. Call to sponsor a child. Thank you. 
Emergencies happen within seconds. Often the outcome is tragic and notification can take hours. That's exactly what happened when my daughter Tiffany died in an accident. It was over six hours before we received the horrible news. That's time we'll never get back. Register your contact information today at toinformfamiliesfirst.org. It's a secure site for law enforcement use. When emergencies happen, family and loved ones need to know. Welcome back to Sheriff's Patrol along with Sheriff Brad Stubbe. I'm Dave Bristow. Well, did you know that 16-year-olds get in more car crashes than drivers of any other age? And that car crashes are the leading cause of death for teenagers in the United States? What better reasons could you have to get your son or daughter into the Sheriff's Office Teen Driver Challenge? Here's an inside look at that program. Teen Driver Challenge is a great challenge for students in high school to come out and learn the skills on how to drive safely on the roads. We actually use most of these skills in the police academy setting and they're doing the same thing. The skills are the same, the courses are the same, it's just a matter of getting the students to the level that they feel comfortable with to drive their car safely. My parents and I agreed that it would be good for me in case anything happened on the road and anything that came out of my control that I could prevent it somehow. Drive safe, pay attention. We start out in the classroom. There's a four hour portion of the classroom where they're showed videos and PowerPoints and we explain the different courses and how we're gonna operate that particular day for driving. And then on Saturday, we have a full day of different events from braking, uh, cornering, and then we work our way into figure eights and skills on sliding and recovering. We teach them about checking the oil, transmission fluids, belts, battery, tires, all the stuff they should know how to do so they don't depend on mom and dad to do it and they keep the car in good mechanical condition. The first event they do is a figure eight and it looks exactly like when you're driving a vehicle that you're making the number eight. And that's a steering, basically for steering and control of the vehicle, getting them confident with it. It creates the students uh, the distance to be able to determine when they should have their pivot point and correctly make their turn. Then we do threshold braking, so like for if someone comes out, dog, cat, whatever, person, another car, they know how to brake properly. And then we do the serpentine, which we do it both forward and reverse. This teaches the students how to maneuver the car to get what we call a roll effect from right to left. The car will shift and it will pivot exactly around the mirror where they'll go around cones to the right and to the left forward and make a complete stop. Control the car, turn around and do that course four times. Can you see that double stack of cones? Yeah. The next course will be our reverse serpentine where the students back up and learn how to use their, their right and their left mirror as well as their rear window to look at the cones and the judge them, looking at their pivot points and doing the entire course backwards. Then we're going to do what is called emergency backing where they're in a forward position. They make a right hand turn and have to quickly back into a lane and park and they'll finish on the skid pad where they learn how to get into a vehicle that has skid tires that will force the car to go into a skid. Um, you're supposed to be controlling when you go around the turn. Once the skid starts, you want to control it, keep fighting it off until you feel the pause. At 15 miles per hour, the back end will begin to break loose where the students have to counter steer in the direction of the skid to control the skid by getting off of the accelerator and relying on their skills to steer out of the skid. You just want to make sure you get out of the skid and drive safely. To let them know what their vehicle will and won't do, especially like threshold brake, braking teaches them, you know, when they press on the brakes, it takes a little while to get that vehicle stopped and why it's important to know that A, your car is in good working condition and B, what it will do. Because we have them bring out the cars that they're going to be driving at home more times than not so they get comfortable with it. 
there's a lot of people that die from car accidents and um, it's, it's a lot of from texting and stuff. We really want to reach the students of Manatee County. It's an opportunity for your kids to learn a lot more than what they're learning in the classroom. They actually get to see and do the same things as law enforcement recruits and uh, hirees from the Manatee County Sheriff's Department, as well as they get a discount of 10% on their insurance. So it's a great incentive for students to come and, and be a part of the community, get to know their officers, and learn some great skills in driving. I recommend this to anybody who's a young driver and is not experienced. Yeah. Yeah, um, if you sign up for this class, you'll learn how to drive better, so you should sign up for it. Well, you know, we add uh, things to this program all the time that uh, makes it that, that much more enjoyable for the kids. And I know our instructors have a great time with this as well. No doubt about it. You know, Sheriff, one way to avoid crashes is simply don't text and drive. The Sheriff's Office recently did a public service announcement on texting and driving. You wouldn't text while playing football. You wouldn't text while cheerleading. So why in the world do you think you can text while driving? Sheriff, a special thanks to the Manatee High School students, the football players, and the cheerleaders who helped us out in shooting this PSA. Well, we had a great time with it, and uh, uh, I think that they were committed to doing this, and they understand uh, uh, the problem with texting, and uh, it, it was good. And, and I've seen it a couple times on Monday Night Football. Yep, uh, we're getting good getting feedback. Good. Yes, we are. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Sheriff's Patrol. Don't forget, for information on the Sheriff's Office, you can go to manateesheriff.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For Sheriff Brad Stubbe, I'm Dave Bristow. So long, everyone. <laughs>